When Warren Buffett was still only a teenager in Washington, D.C., he was in a huge hurry to become rich. So right after graduation from Woodrow Wilson High School in 1947, he wanted to be an investor. But on his father's insistence, he did go to college. And then in 1950, it was off to business school at Columbia University in New York. Warren's favorite professor was Ben Graham, the author of The Intelligent Investor. He was enthralled by Ben Graham and understood that, he, that Ben Graham was teaching him the framework from which he could invest. And what Graham said is, look, stocks, they're just pieces of paper, but they represent something. They represent a part ownership in the business underneath, right? And the way to buy a stock is just as if you were buying the business. The key, if there's one key to what I do, it's I look at every share of stock as being a part of a business. That means I think about the business. I don't think about the price action of the stock, or I don't think about what people are saying they're going to earn next quarter, or anything of the sort, or look at charts. I just try and look at the business. It is the cornerstone of, of these investing principles that Buffett has never veered from. He's added to them, but he's never veered from, from those principles. In 1951, Buffett returned to Omaha, where he worked in his father's brokerage. The 21-year-old fell in love with Susan Thompson, a college friend of Warren's younger sister, Roberta. Oh, Susie was an amazing person. Um, she, was, she had been president of Central High, and that was very unusual in, in those days, to have a girl as uh, class president. She also could sing and was in the musicals, and people loved Susie, and she loved other people. But not Warren Buffett. She had another boyfriend, so Warren courted her father instead. Susie's dad and mother, who were good friends of my parents, um, they were very keen on Warren, and, and uh, Warren played his ukulele, and Doc Thompson played his mandolin together or something, you know, I don't know. <laughs> but he did, he won her. They were married in April 1952, and over the next six years, they had three children, Susan, Howard, and Peter. In 1956, Buffett went into business for himself, and a year later, he was working out of a house on Farnham Street that he had bought for $31,500. His neighbor, Don Keough, thought he was a slacker. He never went to work. He did some funny thing on the telephone, and uh, I was a salesman out selling coffee in the working day and, and late in the evening. But the guy who stayed at home all day was desperately trying to drum up investors. He said, Don, uh, I've been thinking about you. I'm starting a little fund with a few friends. And uh, if you were to put uh, $10,000 in it, I think I could maybe, you know, turn it into a, a nice little piece of money. Well, I said, oh, let me think about it. I remember going into my wife, Mickey, and saying, can you imagine? giving $10,000 to a fellow who doesn't get up and go to work in the morning. Why wouldn't you? There was no doubt about his ability. There was no doubt about his honesty. And I remember the thrilling thought. He said, there'll come a day when this may throw off $1,000 a month. He got doctors he didn't know to contribute at that time big money. This is a kid. He started with $10,000 in 1950, and now he's worth uh, $40 billion. I wake up every night and think about it. No, I, now it's fun to look back on. In 1962, Buffett had his eye on a New Bedford, Massachusetts textile mill called Berkshire Hathaway. It had one important thing going for it. The stock was cheap. Three years later, he had bought enough shares to control the company. It's a sort of a Ben Graham type of stock. Uh, it's traded down, the stock is traded down. The reason it's traded down is textiles are not such a good business anymore. But, you know, Warren thinks he can uh, uh, make a profit on it. But soon, the going got tough. He told the management, look, I want the cash out of this business. So what he starts to do is to squeeze the business. And whatever little dollop of profit he can squeeze, instead of putting it back in the textile business, he buys an insurance company, he buys a chain of weekly newspapers. He buys a steel plant. And little by little, he begins to diversify, to reallocate the capital out of that textile mill into businesses with better futures. And eventually, it becomes a holding company for all of his other investments. 
While Berkshire Hathaway the mill was withering, the holding company's assets kept growing. As an investor, Warren Buffett was phenomenally successful. He outperformed the Dow year after year, and in 1965, by a whopping 33 percentage points. But that year was not a happy one for Warren Buffett. His beloved father died of cancer. His father was a hero to him. Warren thinks his father just really never did any wrong. He will always uh, think of them that way, and, and his father's death was a huge blow in his life. If the mid-60s was a difficult time for Buffett personally, the late 60s would challenge Warren Buffett the investor. The stock market went into a trading frenzy. Speculation grabbed hold of everything, and price earnings ratios went to the sky. Warren couldn't see what stocks there were to buy. Ultimately, Warren uh, reacted to this by closing his investment partnership. The year was 1969, and Buffett sensed that the stock market high was bound to be followed by a catastrophic low. So he returned the partnership's $104 million in assets to his investors in cash or in shares in Berkshire Hathaway, the old textile mill that he decided to hang on to. Warren Buffett was now ready for a new challenge, and he started by leaving his father's Republican Party. There was one issue that separated him from the Republican Party, and that was civil rights. Susie was, uh, you know, more liberal than, than Warren, and particularly in the late 60s and early 70s, she was, uh, you know, always getting behind causes to help uh, uh, blacks, uh, peace. She was sort of, you know, pushing him in that direction. With no partners and few investments beyond the textile mill, Buffett spent little time on investment matters and more working for civil rights, Planned Parenthood, and population control. And for Warren, who remembered the bomb over Hiroshima, nuclear disarmament was another priority. But social issues were not part of the game he loved, and it took only a few years before he came roaring back with an investment that would change his life. In 1970, Warren Buffett, the father of three teenagers, was 40 years old. He had liquidated his original partnership, but he was still working to make his giant $25 million fortune grow even bigger. And that much money can invite danger. I said, Warren, aren't you worried about somebody kidnapping your children? He said, well, they don't know what I look like. It was pure Buffett. He shunned publicity and nothing in the family's lifestyle showed signs of his many millions. And we grew up in kind of the all-American neighborhood. And uh, at the time we grew up, you know, it, it just wasn't much different, I don't think, really honestly, than the, than the kids we went to school with. The Buffett children went to public school and had no sense that there was anything unusual about their family. The children didn't know what he did. And, and, and one time I remember Peter came home from school and said, oh, we're rich, and they blanched. And he said, uh, and they said, uh, what makes you think that? And he said, because Uncle Freddie has a grocery store. His daughter says, everybody said he was a securities analyst. She said, I was halfway grown. I thought he was checking alarm systems. The family continued to live in the house on Farnham Street that Warren Buffett had bought in 1957. It was a happy uh, household. And Susie was the perfect, or almost perfect, wife and mother. We both loved chocolate. I remember one time she was going to make warm cookies for the children when they came home from school. So she did a batch of chocolate chip cookies, but there were none left by the time the kids got home. Susie was, was prominent, predominantly the person who took care of the kids. Uh, Warren worked 